Hi everyone, a very good evening to all of you. Good evening. So as promised, I am back and uh, we had decided that uh, we will try and do some live quiz sessions with you and as also promised, I said this is going to be in the form of a quiz format. So it's going to remain the same. We are going to discuss only two MCQs today, but as uh, if I think, do you remember the older quiz we did? So what is going to be the pattern? So although you will be seeing uh, two MCQs here, but as I said, in every MCQ, I will be discussing at least 10 to 15 more MCQs that are asked from that particular topic. And uh, the volume, okay, uh, okay. Is it better now? Is the volume okay now? Yes, Parth, is the volume okay? All right, so uh, perfect. So, you know, we, uh, uh, in both these topics, I will be discussing the other important points that are very frequently asked in the exams. TK, is everyone ready? And I have selected the topics uh, which are very, very important for NEET PG. So if you go through the previous papers, these topics have been asked especially in the NEET PG. And, uh, you know, um, uh, one of this is also an important topic for INI CET exams. Right, so that is why I selected two most high yielding topics, and sometimes you know you do tend to neglect this also, thinking ki ye pucha nahi jata hai. So I would be discussing those two topics, but as I said, the number of MCQs that we will be discussing is going to be much more. And I want all of my students who are there in the chat box to do an active participation. And as with all my quiz, later on, you are going to send me your scorecard. Yes. So can I get a thumbs up for everyone who agrees to send me a scorecard? Yes. So you will tell me how many questions you have done right out of the total. Okay. So you have to sit with a plain sheet of paper, bacha. Okay. So sit with a plain sheet of paper. And in that uh, when I say this is question number one, you write one. Or agar aapka thik hota hai, to aap tick karoge. Or agar galat hota hai, to aap cross karoge. Because I want you to commit to the answer. Hai na? Kyunki real exam mein bhi, we have to commit to the answer. So I want all of you to commit to the answer. So you will sit with a plain sheet of paper. Mere saath saath, you will do the numbering. And if you do the answer correct, you put a tick. If you do it wrong, you put a cross. And baad mein, I will tell you how to analyze this sheet also, right? So, I will tell you how to analysis kaise karte hai, so that your revision becomes very effective. Hai? Is everyone ready? So, we are going to learn uh, multiple things in this session today. Chalo, very good. So, I can see Sparkle ne mujhe ek writing wala symbol bhi bhej diya hai, and I think everyone is ready. The questions that I have chosen are not very difficult. My idea is to give you more topics, more details of this particular topic because it is important for exams. Okay? Chalo ji. Let's start now. And everybody is okay with English? A combination of Hindi and English? Yes? So I hope English is okay for everyone. I am continuously seeing your chat as well. So don't worry. I'll be able to see who is answering and who is not. And then maybe I'll send a chocolate box from my side to whoever does well. Okay, great. Anmol, Parth, Sparkle, Abhishek, everybody. Chalo ji, let's start. Okay, so take one or two seconds and then read and then commit your answer. Which of the following are contraindications, okay, to external cephalic version? in antenatal management of breach presentation. This is again a multiple correct answer, but it has been converted into a single best answer. So, what do you say? Multiple completion type. And these questions come in exams, mein aate hai, whether it is INI, CT or NEET. Right? So, let's see. Let's see the options. Aman, I will send you both gifts one with one. Okay? Let's see. The first statement number one is antepartum hemorrhage. 2 is multifetal pregnancy, 3 non-reactive NST and D severe oligohydramnios. You have to select the correct answer using the code given below. So what is the answer? Hanji. So okay, okay, everybody commit your answers in the chat box and also commit your answer on the answer sheet. Yes. So Jin Bachone Abhi Meresan join kara. I want you to 
sit with a sheet, write down one, commit your answer and do a checking with me. End may you send me your score and then you will tell me what? Then later on you will tell me or I will tell you after seeing it ki usko analysis kaise karna hai. So let's quickly do this now. Okay, is antepartum hemorrhage a contraindication? The answer is yes. Okay, so this is a true statement. It is a contraindication. Is multifetal pregnancy a contraindication? Yes, which means this is also a true statement. Reactive non-stress test. Is it a contraindication? No. Okay, so this is not a contraindication. This is a false statement. Severe oligohydramnios. Is it a contraindication? Yes, this is again a true statement. So, what is the answer? I think most of you have given me the correct answer for this one. The answer is B. Yes, 1, 2 and 4. Right. So, the first topic that we are discussing today is external cephalic version. This is the one that I was saying is important for both exams, INICET as well as NEET. Right. So, now we will be doing other important questions from this topic okay great Himendra welcome uh, it's a pleasure to have you uh, in the live session today so I'm sure ye cheeze aapko clinical practice mein nursing mein zaroor help karengi right so let's do this now so are you ready for next set of MCQs yes so the answer for this one is B okay question number two okay question number two now the first question for me, uh, for you people is, what is the time, okay, or let me say, what is the earliest time or rather, at what time do you want to do the external cephalic version? So at what period of gestation do you want to do external cephalic version? So commit your answer in your answer sheet as well as here and then we will discuss. Okay, commit your answers on your answer sheet as well as here. Yes, so at what POG do you want to do the external cephalic version? Single answer, single answer. Absolutely, yes. So, Javid, Abhishek, Gunjan, excellent. Koi range nahi dena hai. You have to commit an SBA. Thikhe? So, the single best answer is 37 weeks. Okay, so when any time we ask you when do you do external cephalic version, the single best answer is 37. The recommendation is it can be done any time beyond 36 weeks. Okay, so you it can be done any time beyond 36 weeks, but most commonly beta we do it at 37 weeks. So the single best answer will remain as 37 weeks. Okay, so that is the answer. So cross or tick depending on whether your answer was correct or not. Okay. Now, I am going to ask you other important things. So, contraindications to ECV is a very important MCQ for your exams. It is asked in various formats. Yes. So, the third thing that I want to ask you is, uh, when it comes to uh, contraindication, which type of breach is a contraindication? Okay. Which type of breach? is a contraindication for ECV. Let me see who will commit the correct answer. You have to commit at both the places. Type of breach which is a contraindication for ECV. Very good. So I see fastest finger first. Very good. Subha, Abhishek, Arnab, these are the ones who are fastest fingers first. Excellent. So the single best answer for the type of breach which is a contraindication is footling. Yes. So, footling, you have to know that footling is an indication for a cesarean section, not for doing an external cephalic version because the risk of cord prolapse is highest. Okay. Now, footling is a very good answer. Another type of breach, ho sakta kisi ne koi aur breach bhi likhao. Another type of breach that you should know is a contraindication. Stargazer. Okay. So, another answer is stargazer breach. Stargazer ko, sometimes they may not write it as stargazer. What is the other term they will use in the exam? Hyperextended neck. Okay, so they may write it as hyperextended neck. So they may not write stargazer, but they may write hyperextended neck. So these are the two types of breach. Yes, where you where you should not do an external cephalic version. Okay, very good. Then MCQ number 4. Are you ready for MCQ number 4? 
okay what about uh, if i ask you which of these so i'm asking you the next question which of these is not a contraindication for ECV, okay, which of these is not a contraindication for ECV, your options are preeclampsia, second option is previous caesarean, third option is macrosomia and the fourth option is polyhydramnios, okay, which of these is not a contraindication for ECV. बताऊंगी कि ये इतना इंपॉर्टेंट क्यों है विच ऑफ दीज इज नॉट अ कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन फॉर ई सी वी ऑप्शन प्री एक्लैम्सिया प्रीवियस सिजेरियन मैक्रोजोमिया एंड पॉलीहाइड्रामनियोज वेरी गुड सो एक्सिलेंट आई थिंक एवरीबडी इज आंसरिंग इट परफेक्ट आप लोग बिल्कुल परफेक्ट हो चुके हो येस द बेस्ट आंसर इज पॉलीहाइड्रामनियोज सो पुट अ करेक्ट इन फ्रंट ऑफ योर आंसर शीट पुट अ टिक मार्क very important i want you to remember these three why pre eclampsia previous cesarean and macrosomia all these are relative contra indications for ecv what do you understand by relative relative ka matlab hai ideally we don't want to do an ecv but if you are willing to take the risk then you can do it right but the guidelines recommend don't do an external cephalic version so very important what is preferred is not doing ecv but if you are willing to take the risk then you can do it okay very good arnab excellent explanation the other three are relative so you have to know it the same question can be asked in a format listen to me very carefully if you are doing a breech vaginal delivery what should preferably the be the weight of the baby so please remember if we are going in for breech vaginal delivery it is better to do a vaginal delivery if the weight is less than 4 kg so macrosomia ka do significance hai one is majority of times external cephalic version will fail or will be unsuccessful and second breech vaginal delivery hum nahi karna chahte hain if the weight is more than or equal to 4 kg so less than 4 is what we prefer in case we want to do a vaginal delivery excellent okay uh can you tell me one more relative contraindication so preeclampsia previous cesarean macrosomia any any one more uh, relative contraindication iugr also right so macrosomia and iugr right both actually are what they are both actually relative contraindications yes yeah? so very very important now my question is going to become a little difficult so you have to understand the question first because this is something that was asked once in the exams and the student found it difficult right so question number 5 we are discussing the fifth mcq i am not asking you contra indications but we are asking you what factors will decrease okay what factors will decrease success rate what factors will decrease the success rate of ecv ना बहुत सारे बच्चों को ऐसा लगता है वेन दे आस्क यू दिस दे आर आस्किंग कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन नो सो दिस इज नॉट अ क्वेश्चन ऑन कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन सो आंसर इट वेरी केयरफुली एंड यू कैन कमिट एनी थिंग आप अपने आंसर शीट में कोई भी एक पॉइंट लिख दो आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू वेरियस पॉइंट्स एंड इफ योर पॉइंट्स मैच यू कैन गिव योर सेल्फ अ टिक मार्क ठीक है सो टेल मी वॉट फैक्टर्स विल डिक्रीज दी सक्सेस रेट ऑफ ई सी वी दिस इज अ लिटिल ट्विस्टेड एम सी क्यू but it is uh, an important mcq has been asked recently in the exams okay very good so arnab give yourself a tick mark excellent answer extended breach jiska naam kya hai frank breach so please remember frank breach is not a contra indication but the success rate will be less in frank breach as compared to flexed breach okay so excellent so the first answer is frank breach okay second uh, what will de decrease success rate okay so uh, un korean you have to put a cross beta okay so we have asked you decrease success and you have written multi parity it is actually the reverse all right so nulli parity okay nulli parity all right 
Yes, so please remember this. Nulli parity is what will decrease the success. Multi parity is what will increase the success rate. Okay. Third important thing, adequate liquor. Okay. If the liquor amount is good, then these, no, we are asking for decrease, less liquor. Okay. Less does not actually mean oligo. We mean borderline low liquor levels. Okay. So, yes. Less liquor. For example, what is the normal range for AFI? Jaldi se batao. What is the normal range for amniotic fluid index? 5 to 24. Right? So, if it is not oligo, but if it is in the lower levels of normal, then again the success rate will be less. For example, between 5 to 8, the chances of success are less. So, less liquor. Okay? Very good. Then, anterior placenta. Very important. As compared to posteriorly located placentas, anterior placenta will have a less success rate. So, if you have written anterior placenta, give yourself a correct mark, okay. Also has low success rate. Then obesity, very, very important, bache. So, if somebody has written obesity with low success, it has to go a tick mark. So, very important. These are not contraindications. These are things which decrease the success of ECV. Alright, this is question number 5. So, obesity will decrease the success. Very, very important. Next point, okay. You should know this. Descent of breach into the pelvis. Okay, so if the breach has engaged. So, you can write it as engaged to breach also. So, I am writing as descent of breach in pelvis okay which means engaged breach will reduce the success rate so that is also very important then placenta anterior ho then the success is less and fetal spine agar fetal spine posterior ho then again the success is less so anterior placenta and posteriorly located fetal spine Okay, so posteriorly located fetal spine. Alright. No. So please understand, Bache Aman, inadequate pelvis has nothing to do with version. Version is something you're not doing in the pelvis, you're doing it in the abdomen. Right? So inadequate pelvis can rather actually be a contraindication because contracted pelvis is a contraindication for ECV because vaginal delivery is not possible. Right? So, these are some of the good answers if we ask you low success. Now, question number 6. Very important. And let me see who all get it right. Are you maintaining your sheet with ticks and wrongs? Yes, because I will tell you how to do the analysis also. So, a list zarur banana hai. So, we are on MCQ number 6. Quickly tell me, out of transverse lie and um, breach, which will have a higher success rate of ECV? Yes? So, tell me out of breach and transverse lie, which has higher success rate? I want to know higher success rate kis mein hai bacha. Yes, again important. So, very good Shubha. Yes, so let me get some more answers. Okay, so ab aap log apne genuinely you will put a tick or a cross depending on whether you have done it right or wrong. So, the success rate is more with transverse lie, right? So, transverse lie has more success with ECV. Why? Because bache ko kam ghumana hai. You have to move from only transverse position. The head has to move less. Okay, so transverse lie has more success. Okay, perfect. Very good. Now, uh, the next point uh, is certain statements that I am going to say and you will say true or false and accordingly uh, we will you will you know say whether it was correct for you or incorrect for you okay so next set of questions is a true and false statement so you have to say true or you have to say false are you ready okay so first statement ECV is contraindicated in twin pregnancy ECV is contraindicated in twin pregnancy. True or false? 
यस सो दीज आर ट्रू फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट सो यू हैव टू मार्क अकॉर्डिंगली जल्दी जल्दी आंसर करो इज इट ट्रू और फॉल्स राइट सो इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यू एंड इट इज अ ट्रू स्टेटमेंट ओके दिस इज अ ट्रू स्टेटमेंट राइट ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर एट और एम सी क्यू नंबर एट सो यू हैव टू मार्क अकॉर्डिंगली राइट इंटैक्ट मेम्ब्रेंस is a contra indication for ecv true or false intact membranes is a contra indication for ecv true or false answer karo or commit bhi karo apni answer sheet mein you have to tell me the score at the end of the session yes yes very good everybody excellent kavya pratyusha anmol abhishek excellent yes so this is a false statement in fact it has to be the reverse ruptured membranes is an important contraindication intact membranes is not a contraindication okay question number 9 okay mcq number 9 is for all of you right now i want to ask you a uh, fetal anomaly like hydrocephalus okay fetal anomaly like hydrocephalus is a contra indication for ecv true or false fetal anomaly like hydrocephalus is a contra indication for ecv true or false all right very good i can see answers coming in so good uh, kirtuba good ramesh यस नो रमेश ने गलत आंसर दिया है नॉट रमेश उसको सही से मार्क करना बचा सो यस दिस इज अ ट्रू स्टेटमेंट फीटल अनोमलीज लाइक हाइड्रोसेफेलिस इज डेफिनेटली अ कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन फॉर एक्सटर्नल सेफेलिक वर्जन ठीक है वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन सो दिस इज अमंग्स द लास्ट ट्रू एंड फॉल्स क्वेश्चन देन वी विल चेंज द पैटर्न ऑफ द क्वेश्चन अगेन सो क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन इज Mullerian anomaly, like septate uterus. Okay, Mullerian anomaly, like septate uterus, is not a contraindication. So now I am saying, is not a contraindication for ECV. Tell me, true or false? True or false? True or false? right so here we are talking about mullerian anomaly but the keyword was not a contraindication so isliye this is a false statement so please remember mullerian anomalies like septate biconvoluate okay uh, these are contraindications for external cephalic version okay so these were the true and false question the next set of mcqs is the next best step question are you ready for next best step so these i'm trying to cover all formats so we've done multiple completion we have done some factual questions we have done some true and false questions and now we are going to do some next best step questions yes are you ready for next best step okay so these would be some of the questions that i can ask you about the next best step right are you ready are you ready okay question number 11 for you okay so now we are going to do question number 11 for you so question number 11 is a primary gravida okay a primary gravida is coming to you at 37 weeks and she has a breech baby or a breech presentation of the fetus what is the next best step okay and it can only be one answer so you have to commit your answer and then you will check with me so next best step a primary gravida presents at 37 weeks and the baby is found to be breech what is the next best step okay keep committing i can see the answers are coming in very good kavya and everybody commit your answers commit your answers Yes so i can see that most of you are doing it right the answer to this question can be ecv but what is the better answer yes it has to be 
ultrasound okay it has to be ultrasound please understand ye jo aapne bola humne ki dekho you have to look for contraindications for breach uh, for ecv ye kahan pe dekhoge majority of these things can be seen on ultrasound for example type of breach for example location of placenta for example weight of the baby yes fetal spine so whatever you have to see as contraindications are present or not have to be seen on ultrasound so ultrasound should be done before you order an extra or you start doing an ecv is that clear are you putting a tick and a cross okay very good right next question for you right your patient is a multi gravida okay your patient is a multi gravida with previous one lscs okay she is a multi gravida with previous one lscs with breech baby and she is currently at 37 weeks okay so your patient is a multi gravida she has previous one lsch with current baby in breech presentation at 37 weeks what is the next best step for her tell me what is the next best step for her okay and we have done an ultrasound now so don't answer ultrasound i am telling you that on the ultrasound it is a complete breech okay the ans on the ultrasound i am telling you it is a complete breech liker is adequate placenta is fundal okay so don't answer it as ultrasound i am already giving you some more details so details are that ultrasound is done okay ultrasound is done it shows a complete breech or a flexed breech okay liker is adequate placenta is fundal what is the next best step for her tell me what do you want to do so what do you want to do so she is a patient who will be posted for elective cesarean section okay we would want to do an elective cesarean so sare bacche jinhone cesarean mark kiya hai wo sahi hai right she has to be taken up for an elective cesarean now the second part of the mcq is when when do you want to take her up for elective cesarean tell me when do you want to take her up for elective cesarean because two options confusing ho sakti hain see one option can be induced labor one option can be let me give you the options so one option is induced labor one option is do ecv one option is immediate cesarean and the other is elective cesarean when do you want to do it yes very good ab bane mere acche bacche excellent theek hai so the correct answer is you will post her for an elective cesarean at 39 weeks yes very good so ab aapne dekha hai ki agar aapki taiyari achhi ho the type of mcq does not make a difference does it give you confidence i am changing the pattern of the mcqs i started with one liners i moved on to multiple completion then i did true and false and now i am doing statement questions yes clinical questions so i am saying that majority of you are absolutely answering everything correct which proves that hame pattern badalne se darna nahi hai if your preparation is good you are going to do well in the exam yes so excellent yes elective cesarean agar karna hai it should not be done before 39 weeks bache the best time to do elective cesarean for non medically indicated conditions see if there is a medical indication you might have to do it earlier but if there is no medical indication then elective cesarean has to be done at 39 weeks yes so the best answer is post her for elective cesarean at 39 weeks very good so if you have marked this give yourself a tick okay give yourself a tick why are we not doing ecv because 
ideally we don't want to perform ecv in previous cesarean the preferred method is repeat cesarean especially with breech presentation okay dna i am not giving you the answer is wait and watch because wait and watch means nothing yes you have to take some decision about your patient so you the she is already term now or early term so you have to take a decision what you are going to do okay so bachcha better answer hai amongst the options we are going to do an post her for elective cesarean at 39 theek so ha wait and watch until 39 weeks okay but i'm not giving you that option right now fine why not trial because aman what is the preferred mode of delivery in breech beta always remember aman the preferred mode of delivery in breech is cesarean section you only do vaginal delivery when both the mother and the obstetrician are willing to take the risk theek hai is that correct everyone perfect very good so we are doing what format next best step so question number 13 okay question number 13 mcq 13 is everybody ready for you uh, ready for the answer okay which of the following drugs or no next best step okay what is the next best step for a patient okay what is the next best step for a patient who is undergoing external cephalic version and you see fetal distress so you are doing what what are you doing external cephalic version and you come across fetal distress right what is the next best step what is the next best step tell me tell me aman even in multis beta for breech the preferred mode is cesarean section okay very good so i can see most of you are answering correctly yes the next best step is revert the baby to the original position right so the next best step is you call it as reversion so revert the baby to the original position and then you will take her for cesarean section yes so reversion and then take the mother for cesarean section is that clear okay and after reversion you don't try ecv again theek okay? hai so once you come across fetal distress revert the baby to the original position and take the mother up for a cesarean section okay put a cris take or a cross depending on whether your answer is right or wrong okay question number 14 question number 14 is coming your way right i have done my patient is a case of transverse lie ecv fe no ecv was done at 37 weeks and now the baby has reverted okay so listen to the question carefully okay so listen to the question carefully your patient is a case of transverse lie you did an ecv at 37 weeks which was successful but now at 38 weeks the baby has again gone back to transverse lie yes what is the next best step tell me so next best step wale questions hain ye okay quickly tell me you were doing an ecv for a transverse lie it is successful yes and at 38 weeks you have realized now the baby has gone back to transverse lie what are you going to do yes very good so i can see that everybody is answering correctly well done the answer is can we try ecv again or should i do a cesarean section so we can try an ecv again when are you going to try excellent yes ninsha and swati excellent try ecv again at 39 weeks okay try ecv again at 39 weeks ye aims ke questions hain right so aims people had asked these questions previously so transverse lie mein uh, you know um, 
37 pe you can do one ecg if it fails you can actually do it again at 39 weeks okay quickly question number 15 and the last one for this uh, topic okay uh, is if it fails fails at 39 weeks what are you going to do so suppose your patient is transverse lie right and you have done a version at 39 weeks and it fails what are you going to do what are you going to no do now yes very good so now we will take her up for a planned cesarean section right so we will post her for a cesarean section okay so we once we try it again at 39 and it, it fails at 39 the patient is going for a cesarean section is that clear to everybody okay perfect so please remember two other points about external cephalic version number one ecv is done under continuous fetal monitoring okay that's very important to know that's how we will get to know about fetal distress so it is done under continuous fetal monitoring second do we give tocolysis before uh, um, doing ecv the answer is yes so please remember if you give tocolysis right before ecv it will improve the success yes so it will improve the success rate the drug that we use is terbutylene okay 0 0.25 milligrams subcutaneous it is given approximately 15 to 30 minutes prior to the procedure right so we will give it 15 to 30 minutes prior to the procedure yes so this was the first topic for the day external cephalic version very very important as i said for both inict as well as neat exams so how many out of 15 before i shift the topic so we have one more topic yes so before i shift the topic can you tell me your scorecard let me see what is your scorecard or apne aapko genuinely score karna hai this is not a real exam this is just to have an insight so quickly tell me your marks out of 15 in the chat box and later on i will tell you at the end of the session how to analyze once you attempt mcqs and how you can use this method to improve yourself okay 12 is good 13 is very good 10 is absolutely fair not bad 8 you can improve 14 is excellent 11 is good 11 is good 12 is very good 6 bedena koi baat nahi but we need to buck up and i'm sure ab zarur kar paoge similarly uh, aman koi baat nahi 7 hai but you need to buck up this is an important topic bache and i hope you have revised something okay 13 14 excellent 12 is very good 11 is good 10 is fair below that you need to push yourself okay all right so are we ready for the next topic I am very happy that you are able to tell your scores because you know it, it tells you that you don't have to be scared from you. We are not to be We are going to practice it because we want to know where we should put our efforts and how to improve. So you will never get scared from solving MCQs. You have to push yourself and there are various ways. You can do it in a playful method. See what I am doing with you is only a playful method trying to bring interest into what you really need to do. Yes. So, YouTube can be made interesting as well. Huh? Study can be made interesting as well. YouTube to bahut interesting hai. But yes, padhai ko interesting banana hai. Right? Chalo. Sudha koi baat nahi. You just need to buck up bache. This is an important topic for your exams. So, I am sure ab zaroor kar paoge. Right? Are we ready for the next topic? Okay. The next topic is specially very important for NEET. Neat PG has asked question on this topic already twice in the recent years. Okay, so are we all ready now? Chalo. Let us look at this topic. So again, you are going to give yourself score. So similarly, maintain a white sheet of paper and you will give yourself marks. Uh, you will first tick the answers which are correct and you will put a cross 
to questions which are incorrect we will give ourselves a score after the session okay chalo so the next topic is what are spiegelberg's criteria for diagnosis of ovarian pregnancy pehli baat to ye naam hi bahut important hai but spiegelberg criteria are used to diagnose ovarian pregnancy and the second point which is important is that it is used to diagnose primary ovarian pregnancy okay so it is used to diagnose primary ovarian pregnancy quickly commit your answers everybody commit your answers all right i can see all right anand and kavya yes all of you commit your answers good 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 going keep it up keep it up yes so i think most of you have committed your answers so we'll start so the first is and the reason i took this particular question is because many a times you people ask me this in the chat box or as a message ma'am are, are we supposed to learn the criteria the answer is yes especially for ovarian neat pg ko kuch pyar hai isse already do baar pooch chuke hain so they might ask again in a different format theek hai yes so tube on the affected side must be normal is it true yes that's a true statement okay next gestational sac must be in the position of the ovary is this true yes this is also a true statement gestational sac is connected to the uterus by ovarian ligament yes sabse pehle jab neat mein ye question aaya tha you had to pick the incorrect question or option and the option was that it is attached by the round ligament so that was the incorrect answer it is attached to the uterus by ovarian ligament okay ovarian tissue must be detected in the wall of the tissue uh, in the wall of the ectopic the answer is yes so all of you are right so this is question number 16 for you okay and you can give yourself a tick mark so ye sabne sahi kara hai so a tick mark for all of you now are you ready for next set of questions on these ectopics okay chalo very good let's go on to question number 17 get set go who is going to tell me the named criteria for abdominal ectopic who is going to tell me the named criteria for abdominal ectopic quickly you have to commit your answer here and in your answer sheet yes abdominal ectopic okay everybody keep commenting keep commenting snehil arnab i am seeing you are already committing your answers rameshwari yes linsha all right i think everybody knows it and it's important the names are very important so for abdominal ectopic you are right the named criteria are study ford okay they are called as study ford criteria so give yourself a tick mark okay okay now tell me is this criteria true or false is it and this is with respect to study ford so i am asking with respect to study ford criteria you have to tell me if it is true or false tell me that there should be no evidence of okay utero peritoneal fistula no evidence of utero peritoneal fistula is it true or is it false tell me okay bj medical dekho beta the uh, the ectopic sac is in the region of the ovary yes so ovary is connected to the uterus by which ligament not by the round ligament na it is connected to the uterus by ovarian so isliye the ectopic sac would also be connected to the uterus by the ovarian ligament all right okay so yes this is one of the study ford's criteria it is true right and it is a utero peritoneal fistula iska matlab aisa nahi hona chahiye that the pregnancy was initially in the uterus and then through a fistula it has gone into the abdomen no so please remember these criteria whether it is study ford or it is uh, you know um spiegelberg they are for primary pregnancies so there should be no fistula this is a true statement okay 
question number 19 for you and this is also part of the study for criteria so you have to tell me true or false okay tubes and ovaries on the affected side should be normal or should be normal in general tubes and ovaries should be normal with no evidence of recent pregnancy is it a part of the study for criteria yes so is it a part of the study for criteria yes because we have to rule out that the pregnancy should not be coming from the uh, from the fallopian tube or the ovary so yes this is also a true statement so give yourself a tick mark what is the third let me see if anybody can tell me what is the third study ford criteria so there are three components of the study ford criteria one is no utero peritoneal fistula one is that the tubes and ovaries should be normal third wala main bata deti hu presence of pregnancy early enough okay pregnancy should be early enough and it should be exclusively it should be exclusively related to the peritoneal surface okay so isme do cheeze aa rahi hain one that the pregnancy is early enough so that we are ruling out that it is coming from somewhere else and the second component is it should be related to the exclusively to the peritoneal surface yes so those are the three components of study for criteria very very good rehnas very good okay now coming to the next mcq question number 21 what are the named criteria for cervical ectopic anybody what are the named criteria for cervical ectopic very important as i said for neat pg repeatedly they have been asking these so yes tell me what are the named criteria you have to commit here and commit in the answer sheet that you are maintaining for yourself yes okay ananda okay anju i can read your answers linsha hanji yes i think everybody is doing it right but beta single best answer should be palman criteria some of you are answering it is rubin magar rubin aajkal use nahi hote hain so if you have to mark one answer that palmans is a better answer than rubin okay rubin is older criteria for cervical ectopic the newer ones that we are using are palman okay great so tell me if this statement is true or false so this is mcq number 22 and this is with respect to the palman criteria you have to tell me true or false internal os should be open and external os should be closed true or false jaldi jaldi commit karna hai aur apne aap commit karna hai don't see dusre bachon ke answer ha internal os open external os closed true or false जल्दी जल्दी आंसर करना है जल्दी जल्दी आंसर करना है ओके कमिट कमिट गुंजन अमन स्नेहिल आई कैन सी योर आंसर्स आई वांट अदर पीपल टू कमिट देयर आंसर्स ओके सो आई सी सम ऑफ यू हैव गॉट कंफ्यूज्ड सो दिस इज अ फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट और मैंने फॉल्स इसलिए दिया है सो दैट आप एक सेकंड लगाओ सोचने के लिए दिस इज अ सर्वाइकल एक्टोपिक व्हिच मींस the primary pregnancy should have been in the cervix it should not be coming from the uterus so it should be actually the reverse reverse matlab what is the true part internal os should actually be closed and external os should be partially open right so it has to be the reverse that is what is the palman's criteria is that clear okay very good now tell me tell me what is the classic shape of this is mcq number 23 okay this is mcq number 23 so you have to tell me what is the classic shape of cervix described when it is a cervical ectopic or what is the classic shape of the uterus described anybody what is the name of the shape of the uterus when it is a cervical ectopic let me see if you can answer otherwise i'll give the answer don't worry it is also a part of palman's criteria so i am still discussing the palman's criteria 
नो वी डोंट कॉल इट टी शेप्ड दैट इज वे डाई इथाइल स्टिल बेस्टेरॉल बचा ओके वॉट इज द आंसर सो इट इज क्लासिकली डिस्क्राइब्ड एज आर ग्लास ओके आप लोग आंसर कर रहे हो सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस टी यू वी नो 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 ओके सो इट्स एन आर ग्लास अपियरेंस वाई बिकॉज एक्चुअली सर्विक्स इज मोर एन लार्ज सो इट एक्चुअली इधर बिकम्स बिगर देन द यूट्रिस और ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल इन साइज टू द यूट्रिस सो इट्स कॉल्ड एज आर ग्लास ओके सो दिस इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ पालमेंट्स क्राइटेरिया इट इज एन एन लार्ज सर्विक्स ओके और इट इज समाइम्स इवन लार्जर दैन द बॉडी ऑफ द यूट्रिस यस कोई बात नहीं सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू हैव टू नो it can be larger than uterus or of the same size so it looks like an hour glass okay so it's called as an hour glass appearance all right question number 24 again related to palman's criteria palman's criteria tell me is there any uh, cramping when there is a cervical ectopic normally we say pain is the hallmark for ectopic pregnancy what is characteristic to cervical ectopic anybody anybody what is characteristic to cervical ectopic so is there pain in cervical ectopic let me see if you can commit your answers what is the classic inclusion of the palman's criteria yes kavya and very good you are committing your answers i want other people to commit as well excellent yes so very classically here the patient will present with bleeding but there will be no pain so bleeding without uterine cramping okay so bleeding without uterine cramping is the fourth palman's criteria yes so very very essential question number 25 is the last palman's criteria so you will tell me where are the pocs attached pocs kya hote hain product of conception so you will tell me where are the pocs attached with respect to palman's criteria dekho hum log palman's criteria discuss kar rahe hain so tell me what is the fifth criteria or inclusion pocs are attached to what part quickly i want the correct answer okay i'll give you options are they attached to the fundus of the uterus are they attached to endocervix are they attached to ectocervix or are they attached to the vaginal wall okay where are the pocs attached quickly let's see who is going to come it first anyone very good excellent so i can see now when i've given you options you are able to answer right so pocs actually have to be firmly attached to the endocervix that is the fifth palman's criteria so when you send the tissue for histopathology you know you have to know that pocs should be firmly attached to the endocervix okay so it's not the uterine fundus it's not ectocervix and it's not vaginal wall okay so now i hope by doing it this way will you all now remember the spiegelberg the studi ford and the palman's criteria ab dar to nahi lagega because i very often get this message especially close to the exam ki ma'am ye yaad karne hai kya so they are important for neat pg i'm telling you spiegelberg has already been asked twice and they are asking the criteria not only the names names have been consistently asked in the aims exams so i hope now aapko usse dar nahi lagega we will do a set of few more important mcqs about the ectopic thing that we are doing okay so question number 26 what is the most common risk factor for ectopic pregnancy yes come on tell me what is the most common risk factor for ectopic pregnancy okay some one liners which are very important from the topic ectopic i will ask we'll make it a total of 30 mcqs for today and then i will do the analysis okay chalo batao koi baat nahi abhishek aaj to pata lag gaya Yes so let's look at the positive side you knew the names but you did not know the criteria but i hope now you know them yes okay so everybody see i knew when i asked this aap log confused ho gaye dekho keyword kya hai 
द की वर्ड इज मोस्ट कॉमन आप लोग क्या आंसर कर रहे हो यू आर आंसरिंग हाइएस्ट रिस्क फैक्टर सो प्लीज रिमेंबर द मोस्ट कॉमन इज पेल्विक इन्फ्लमेटरी डिजीज नॉट प्रीवियस हिस्ट्री सो जेन्यनली मार्केट राइट और रॉन्ग डिपेंडिंग ऑन कैसा हुआ है ठीक है सो रिमेंबर मोस्ट कॉमन इज पी आई डी ऑल दो द हाइस्ट रिस्क इज विथ प्रीवियस हिस्ट्री ऑफ एक्टोपिक और हिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्यूबल सर्जरी ओके सो प्रीवियस हिस्ट्री ऑफ एक्टोपिक और ट्यूबल सर्जरी आर वॉट कैरी दी हाइएस्ट रिस्क दे आर नॉट द मोस्ट कॉमन रिस्क फैक्टर्स ठीक है प्लीज करेक्टेड दे आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सेकेंड थिंग आई नो बोथ ऑफ दीज प्रीवियस हिस्ट्री ऑफ एक्टोपिक एंड हिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्यूबल हैव हाइएस्ट रिस्क मगर अगर एक मार्क करना होगा तो क्या होगा प्रीवियस हिस्ट्री सो इफ यू हैव टू मार्क वन वेन दे आस्क यू वॉट कैरीज हाइएस्ट रिस्क आंसर इट एज previous history of ectopic pregnancy okay all right question number 27 you are going for an exam so you have to answer it as true or false intra uterine device is a risk factor for ectopic pregnancy true or false only answer it in the way i am asking you is it a true statement or is it a false statement it is mcq number 27 हाँ जी आईओडी इज अ रिस्क फैक्टर फॉर एक टॉपिक बच्चा ओके जावेद अर्नब उर्वी आनंद आई एम सींग योर ऑफ आंसर्स कमिटेड वेरी गुड सो नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर कमिटिंग एंड आई विल टेल यू वेदर इट इज ट्रू और फॉल्स दिस इज अ ट्रू स्टेटमेंट ओके यस इट इज अ रिस्क फैक्टर बिकॉज इफ आई यू डी फेल्स ऑल द फेलियर रेट इज लेस बट इफ इट फेल्स then the pregnancy that happens has a very high risk of being a ectopic pregnancy so it is a risk factor for ectopic this is a true statement beta ji okay please understand this all right yes we call it as a relative risk but it is definitely a risk factor question number 28 which iud has the higher risk of um ectopic pregnancy is it copper t or is it mirena which intra uterine device okay has higher risk of leading to an ectopic pregnancy is it copper t or is it mirena okay commit your answers okay pratyusha dr christina ravi i am able to see your answers which one of the two has higher risk okay very good i can see most of you are committing and most of you are right the answer is mirena the risk with mirena is 1 in 16 while the risk with copper t is 1 in 50 so out of the two mirena has a higher risk of causing ectopic kyunki usme do cheeze hain it is an intra uterine device and on top of that it also has progesterone right so both contribute so the risk is higher with mirena as compared to copper t if they fail okay chalo very good now question number 29 what is the most common site of ectopic pregnancy okay the options are ampulla isthmus okay the options i am writing isthmus ampulla interstitial or fimbrial right so what is the most common site of ectopic pregnancy a very elementary mcq but has been asked in the aims exams has been asked in the neat exams in fact if they give this mcq be thankful they're giving you something to score hai na so can, tell me tell me okay i can see most of you are answering it correctly it is a simple question i gave it so that you have a feel good factor at the end of the quiz so all of you are right the answer is ampulla okay the answer is ampulla do you remember the why why is important tell me what is the reason why is ampulla the most common site all right yes why is ampulla do you know the why so whenever they ask you the why which is what aims people do the best answer is because it is the site of fertilization that is why it is the most common site of ectopic as well okay if this is not in the options 
right in case most common site of fertilization is not in the options then the second best answer is because it has maximum number of lycae that is the second best answer not the best answer so best answer here why ka because it is the site of fertilization second best answer here because yes it has maximum number of lycae or mucosal folds right so excellent nahi bachche swati widus uska karan nahi hai yes so widus is not the reason beta so aims walo ne kya kiya tha earlier they asked what is the most common site and then when they had to ask the repeat question they actually asked the why why is ampulla the most common site right so i hope it is now clear to everybody so we come to the last question of the quiz okay let me see if you can answer that you have to answer it as true or false all right true or false angular pregnancy is a type of ectopic pregnancy true or false okay angular pregnancy is a type of ectopic pregnancy true or false chalo batao fir humne marks dekhne hain aur fir humne analysis seekhna hai yes jaldi jaldi batao commit your answers commit your answers everyone good going good going okay so should i give the answer i think i should yes so most of you have committed but a lot of you have done this question wrong koi baat nahi i have to ensure that you don't do it wrong in the exam yes so please remember this is a false statement okay it's not true bachcha it is a false statement angular pregnancy is a type of intrauterine pregnancy theek hai bachche it is a type of intrauterine pregnancy which is close to the opening of the fallopian tube but it is not an ectopic it is an intrauterine pregnancy yes is it clear to everyone no commitment cannot be changed satvik tabhi usko commitment kehte hain theek hai ek bar humne commitment kar diya to hum kisi ki nahi sunte apne aap ki bhi nahi theek hai so no don't change your commitments theek hai chalo so now in this today's quiz session we've done two very important topics one was external cephalic version and one was different types of ectopics they are very important for neat pg yes and uh, i hope you found it interesting as well as high yielding because mujhe man karta hai ki jab aap padho to aap khush hokar padho it shouldn't feel like a burden so quickly tell me genuinely did you feel it like a burden or was it fun for all of you because wo zaruri hai jab hame kisi cheez mein maza aayega to hum acche se use retain kar payenge i feel that and outcome bhi acha rehta hai right so tell me was it uh, was it a burden or a stress or was it fun was the quiz quiz okay right excellent so now quickly once you tell me this you have to tell me your score card so that i can tell you how to analyze whenever you solve mcq so this is going to be the second part of my session today a lot of times all of you are practicing mcqs but i have seen despite the fact that you practice mcqs kuch bachon ke scores static reh jate hain i get this message every day in my you know messenger or instagram or on twitter मैम आई हैव रीच दिस नंबर बट आई एम नॉट एबल टू इंक्रीज सो पहले मुझे सबसे पहले बताओ वॉट आर योर मार्क्स आउट ऑफ थर्टी येस वॉट आर योर मार्क्स आउट ऑफ थर्टी सो वी डन थर्टी एम सी क्यूज थारो डिस्कशन ऑफ टू टॉपिक्स विच आर वेरी हाई यील्डिंग टॉपिक्स एंड वेरी प्रॉबेबल टॉपिक्स इज वेल सो क्विकली टेल मी योर स्कोर्स राइट हाउ मेनी करेक्ट आउट ऑफ थर्टी एंड देन आई विल टेल यू हाउ टू एनालाइज सो दैट नेक्स्ट टाइम आप और बेटर कर पाओ और ये टॉपिक्स आपके स्ट्रेंथ बन जाए यस ओके ट्वेंटी वन इज गुड एटीन इज फेयर ऑल राइट ट्वेंटी थ्री गुड ट्वेंटी फाइव इज वेरी गुड ट्वेंटी फोर इज ऑल्सो वेरी गुड फिफ्टीन कोई बात नहीं अमन बट आई एम श्योर आपको अब पता है कि वॉट आर दी एरियाज जहाँ पे हमारी गलती हुई सो मे बी वी कैन गो एंड रिवाइज दैम यस Joel no problem 18 is fair but you are absolutely capable of bringing it to 25 yes what about other people they are not telling their scores dekho aapko aisa lag raha hai ki main kaise likhu apna score bacche kya kahenge 
कोई किसी में इंटरेस्टेड नहीं है ये जो आप लिख रहे हो दिस इज एक्चुअली लाउडली टेलिंग इट टू योर ओन सेल्फ येस एंड दिस इज ओनली टू हेल्प यू दैट वी डोंट हैव टू गेट स्केर्ड इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ वॉट इज गोइंग टू कम करेक्ट दिस दीज आर योर प्रैक्टिस सेशन यू डोंट हैव टू गेट स्केर्ड You actually have to learn to acclimatize to your score, so that you don't get scared. Yes, that is the real purpose. Okay, no problem. That's okay. That's okay. In the second half, some of you have not done very well. That is absolutely fine. The entire purpose is that we stop getting scared of this result. Yes, itna to exam nahi marta aap logon ko jitna result marta hai. Is that true? The waiting of the result. is what is so troublesome so i have to tell you that the first important thing about success is to detach yourself from the outcome if you really want to do well and if you want to read consistently without undue stress and strain please detach yourself from the outcome and the only way to do it is to face your fear if you repeatedly do such testing then you know you will not be scared are agar 18 aaye to kya hoga if i secure only 12 to kya hoga kuch nahi ho raha nothing has happened so even if you have secured 18 or 12 or 15 nothing has happened yes so please realize this that you have to get accustomed to this so that you can do more such sessions and do them to improve your score right now Once you have done this, let's do the analysis. Now, all of you, I want you to do this on the same white sheet or on any other white sheet. I want you to write down what did you do wrong. Now, when I want you to write what did you do wrong, I don't want you to write I did ectopic wrong. Okay. So, if somebody is going to write I did ectopic wrong, this is not a good way. It will not help you improve. Can you tell me why? Can you tell me why? Because जब आपने ऐसे लिख दिया तो इसका मतलब you have to sort of read the entire topic again and it scares you. Okay, you think that इस topic को पढ़ने के लिए मुझे दो तीन घंटे चाहिए and you feel whenever I will get those three hours only then I will revise. So you are delaying your revision, right? And also you get scared from it. Third thing is what else happens you know uh, your your revision will be exactly like your first reading aapne jo cheeze pehle padha tha wahi aap abhi dobara padoge instead you will not be focusing on what you were weak at so whole ectopic is not the way to write down what are you going to write down you are going to write down i did in the spiegelberg okay I did the criteria wrong. So next time you know that even if you have ten minutes, okay, even if you have ten minutes, can you quickly open and go and read only the criteria? Tell me yes or no. Yes, you only need barely five minutes. Sometimes maybe ten if you are distracted to do the criteria. You don't need more time, which means. suddenly you will realize that you can do revision even if you don't have a lot of time and that is the entire purpose you have to make your wrong diary in such a way that it doesn't scare you okay you have to make a wrong diary in such a way that it empowers you right ye dekh ke mujhe confidence aata hai acha mujhe criteria karne hai na koi baat nahi i will do it i only need 10 minutes i will do it today after dinner I will watch television for ten less minutes and spend those ten minutes in revising the criteria. Whereas, if I had written a topic, I need three hours, and I'm not going to do it any time soon. I'm going to delay it. Yes. So I want that all of you are going to be very specific in writing what you did wrong, and that's how you make a wrong diary. Are you all going to do that? Yes or no? Are you going to do that? so please remember whenever you are practicing mcqs even if it is like by your own self even if you are sitting and doing 50 mcqs always do them in a test format especially the closer you go to the exams you should do it in a test format always give yourself a limited time like i will do 50 mcqs in 20 minutes or 30 minutes right so give yourself a limited time 
take a sheet of paper commit your answers the idea of reading acha a hai ha ha maine bhi a socha tha so a lot of times you do this what do you do you see the answer and then you think oh i also thought a whereas maybe you would have you know committed on b so sit with a limited time commit your answers check your answers give yourself marks empower yourself don't put your you know give away your power you can grade yourself and you can bring up your own self by knowing where to work on always after the mcq session make a wrong diary which has to be a very very precise a very specific things so that you can revise things hand in hand रिविजन का मतलब ये नहीं होता है कि वो एंड में करना है यस यू कैन वेरी वेल डू द रिविजन एट द सेम टाइम व्हेन यू आर स्टडिंग एक्टिवली योर नोट्स और एनीथिंग एल्स सो आई वांट अ लिटिल प्रॉमिस फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ यू हु आर हियर टुडे इन द चैट बॉक्स दैट फ्रॉम टुडे ऑनवर्ड्स यू विल स्पेंड एट लीस्ट थर्टी मिनट्स टू वन आवर एवरी डे एंड आई वॉन्ट इट एज अ प्रोमिस एंड प्रोमिस शुड बी केप्ट ओके so you will spend at least a minimum of 30 minutes maybe one hour every day in revising something old are you going to promise me jaldi se promise karo agar promise karoge tabhi main ek aur session karungi nahi to nahi karenge yes so you have to promise me so that you know your promise makes me come back again with a new obgy quiz session yes so promise me that you are going to do that okay right so start your revisions make your revisions more effective they will give you confidence and they will encourage you a lot of times you know you seek encouragement from outside when you can actually encourage your own self yes so in fact aap log to hame encourage karte ho yes by by giving answers by coming to our live sessions you are encouraging us so you can always encourage your own self theek hai so up you should keep this promise start your revision from today itself don't wait for the end okay so this is going to be it from my side today wish you all the best and i i hope you find the session uh, useful for your revision i am trying to select topics which you students try and ignore right but they have been asked in the exams and they are important okay chalo take care everybody bye bye and all the best keep studying keep working hard and always give your best okay bye